Welcome to News Talk with Simone Ivani, an international news channel of TAG TV. The United States, Germany and Britain hosted a virtual event at the United Nations to discuss the treatment of Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang. China was aware that the conference will take place and had in fact lobbied for UN members to not attend, labeling the event as anti-China. Nonetheless, 50 countries attended the gathering, including Chinese diplomat Guo Jiakun. Western states and rights groups are accusing Xinjiang authorities of detaining and torturing Uyghur and other minorities in camps. U.S. UN Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield said the countries will keep speaking up until China's government stops its crimes. The British UN Ambassador called the situation one of the worst human crises of our times, calling for China to allow the UN to have free and immediate access to the camps. China has denied the accusations. So-called genocide, forced labor, systematic rape and torture in Xinjiang are lies of the century, which never happens and will never happen in China. China has nothing to hide on Xinjiang. Xinjiang is always open. Over 1,200 diplomats, journalists, scholars from more than 100 countries have visited Xinjiang in past years. We welcome everyone to visit Xinjiang, but we oppose any kind of investigation based on lies and with the presumption of guilt. Joining us today to discuss the matter further, we have Rukier Turdush, who's a researcher at Uyghur Research Institute. Welcome, Rukier. Thank you very much for having me. Thank Glad you. to have you on the show. So what do you feel about the recent conference hosted to discuss the treatment of Uyghur Muslims in Xinjiang? Um, I feel supported. Of course, all of the Uyghurs feel supported. Uh, thank you very much for this um, this event that event um, because they uh, they demand China to stop the genocide and uh, stop uh, ask China unimpedent access for the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights and I think if there is no genocide China should allow UN Human Rights Commissioner for Human uh, UN UN Human Rights Commissioner to access to the region if they have nothing to hide. A day after the conference, five Muslim leaders from the Xinjiang region said that China is not suppressing religious freedoms and is in fact improving livelihoods by countering religious extremism and educating people about the law. Why do you think that there's such a big difference in both narratives? What China said is total light. It cannot hold the truth because the amount of evidence we have. We have uh, satellite images. We have uh, survivors here. To, and so many witnesses. If you're going to Xinjiang Victims Database, the more than 14,000 people disappeared, arrested. We have full, uh, full of evidence here. If China said these, there is a ter they are terrorists, these people are re-educated, they just don't want to cover. Uh, they are crime, and nothing else. And if some Muslim leaders supporting what China said, they were bought by the China because China infiltrated to each country, the buying politicians and influencing their decision making. If these religious leaders didn't care about suffering Muslims in East Turkestan and support what China said, they are really, I cannot say they are blind. There is a truth they can see, but they intentionally not doing this because they are put their state benefit at first. This has become state relations. Not they are not putting the religion at first. Second, they influenced by China and they bought by China, get bribed by China. And there are Uyghur rights groups that are calling for a separation of East Turkestan from China. So, based on your knowledge, are all Uyghur Muslims supporting this? Yes, I can say that. I prefer that, um, the, the, usually people say secessionists, I prefer to use the term decolonization or independence because we are not China's ethnic minority in China's territory. China is in our territory. So we want to be decolonized and get back our own country, the East Turkestan Republic that established in 1944. So Uyghurs, I would like to talk about a little bit history about this issue to answer your question, because Uyghurs resist China's colonialism and the oppression since China invaded. Resistance of people of East Turkestan always faced bloody crackdown, and each time they were harshly treated. 
the following the China is rising in the last decades, the Uyghurs step back and only demand human rights because China is too powerful. People of East Turkestan has no external support. It's impossible to kick China out of East Turkestan. So the Uyghurs only ask basic human rights. Uyghurs and other Turkic minorities in East Turkestan, people of East Turkestan, I can say, ask only basic rights. But these basic demands also harshly rejected and face bloody crackdown. For example, in Gulja Massacre in 1977, people peacefully protested. China is banning Meshrap. Meshrap is Uyghur cultural event. Um, in July 5th, in 2019, I mean, 2009, the protesters in Urumqi, the Uyghur protesters, also started peacefully protest and demand justice by raising China's uh, Chinese flag. And but this protest was harshly cracked down also. So now in these days, the genocide going on there. So I believe all Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims want to be independent because it's impossible to live under Chinese rule. This has become a survival issue right now. Even the Ilham Tohti, he demands just equal rights with Han Chinese according to Chinese uh, law, sentenced it to life. So it's impossible to live with, under the Chinese rule and live together with Chinese right now. So that's why every Uyghur, I believe, want independence right now because it's a survival issue. Then speaking about that, in, in her criticism of this meet, China's foreign minister spokeswoman Hua Chunying said that the U.S., along with other participating nations, is using human rights issues to interfere in China's internal affairs. So what are your thoughts on these accusations, especially at a time when the U.S. is blocking a U.N. Security Council statement calling for a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas with what's going on in Palestine today? I, just the China last week charged that organizers of the event, which also uh, happened in, um, included several other European states along with Australia and Canada and the U.S. use human rights issues as a political tool to interfere in China's internal affairs, like you said. First of all, I would like to say that East Turkestan is a colonized country and it should not be considered as China's internal affairs since China is the invader. Second, genocide is going on there right now at this moment according to international law responsibility to protect convention international community should use peaceful means to prevent genocide and to take collective action through the un security council ironically china was one of the member so they denying the genocide and of course they're going to block with their veto power and in, we recently saw that 57-nation organization of the Islamic Cooperate, Corporation demanding Israel to halt attacks in the Gaza Strip. However, we don't see such actions being taken against the treatment of the Uyghur Muslims in China. So why do you think that is? I think it's about the West and the rest issue. Most of the Muslim countries are autocratic or no power to stand against China because they need China um, as an ally against the Western countries, since Western countries are close ally to Israel, right? They also need Chinese money. China already infiltrated, like I said, into those countries about decision makers, uh, politicians. So state diplomacy and the state interests are the priority for these Muslim countries right now, not the religion. But Muslim population, I mean, individual Muslims support people of East Turkestan, but civilians can do much in, in those Muslim countries. And is there any clarity as to what type of action Uyghur Muslims are expecting from these international communities, either to help them or to counter the Chinese Communist Party? And if so, is there an independent state for these minorities? Is that a possibility to be able to separate from China? Okay, as an individual, as a community, everyone has to actively engage any activities to stop China's genocide because this is not only about Uyghur or other Turkic Muslim issues in East Turkestan. China is, uh, China is threat to the world right now. They would like to replace current liberal world order and human rights with Chinese characteristic world order. If that happens, every other nationality will be going through what is Uyghurs going through right now. 
and already many autocratic countries accept Chinese model model to control its own people. And so it's a very dangerous and everyone has to push their governments to stand up, recognize, recognize China's genocide and stop this genocide and to take action. And the, you just to say uh, how we can, with the help of international community, can we become independent, right? One of your so, uh, the question. I'm thinking we can, if the international community respect the international law, they should support Uyghurs and stop the genocide. If China do not stop genocide, according to international law, Vienna Convention and the many uh, other several international laws and the General Assembly resolutions, when there is no internal self-determination was guaranteed, external self-determination should be guaranteed. That means China denied Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims' rights, and we are on, there is ongoing genocide right now. We, there is no guarantee for the internal self-determination because autonomous rights that China promised was not guaranteed to. In these circumstances, we need external self-determination and to get independence. But unfortunately, international community is not supporting independence of East Turkestan because usually self-determination law uh, in the United Nations are not legal, uh, but political in most of, most of the cases. That's unfortunate. Last but not least, ahead of the virtual meet, China's UN mission sent notes to UN's 193 member nations, discouraging them from participating. China's UN Ambassador Zhang Jun even went as far to text 15 Western nations expressing shock at their support and urging them to think twice. Why do you think there's such a big backlash from Chinese officials if, as they say, they have nothing to hide? They, that's mean they have something to hide. That's mean they want to cover. There is an ongoing genocide. That's why they, they don't want the UN High Commissioner um, access to unimpeded access to the region because they have so many things to hide. There must be mass killings they want to hide. That's why they want, they they using, the, they uh, using Chinese propaganda and they using fake news and they using fake scenes uh, and they the buying other countries to, to block this. Because uh, I can see a lot of uh, TikTok, I mean, Douyin videos in China. The China right now just the, the, taking out those um, barricades at the streets and uh, just the, like some police checkpoints and they just want to create in fake scenes and they even at this um, the, the Muslim festival and Ramadan festival they force some people to go to the mosque pray they in advance they just force force and ask some people to come to the front of the Eidka mosque and the, uh, and, and the Ramazan festival, the, the dancing. So this is all pre-organized and forced them to do that because China wants to cover its crime. That's why they're doing this. And speaking of that, without external support, do you think Turkestan or the visual minorities in China will be able to separate themselves? Not alone to support themselves, cannot survive the Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims will be disappear from this world without the international support mm. because China can do whatever they want. Well, thank you for speaking to us, Rukia. We look forward to having you back very soon. Thank you. And thank you for watching Tag TV's International News Channel. I am Simone Ivani.